hiding from the government Smack talking sneakers can't keep a thing to themselves Hey everybody, how's it going? Let's talk about your home recording studio. Today we are going to take a quick look at what is in this box here and uh, let's get it on out of here just in a jiffy. All right, what we have here is the M Audio M Track Solo. This is an entry level audio interface, one of the cheapest ones that you can buy. I was really curious about this because it is a uh, direct competitor to the Behringer Euphoria uh, UMC22. So kind of feature for feature, a very similar little box, right at the same price. I've used a few of the UMC22s and uh, I wanted to see how this little guy stacks up. Well, let's get him out of his box and let's take a look. All right, inside the box, we get, looks like a uh, uh, user guide here. We got a USB cable, so it looks like a USB A to B cable. And we get the unit itself, well packed in here. Boy, I tell you what, first impression, just right out of the box, it is light. It reminds me and feel of the Native Instruments KA2. Like it's definitely very light, very plasticky. Looks like the entire body is all plastic. And let's take a look at what all this thing offers. So on the top here, it looks like we have individual gain knobs for channels one and two. And yeah, those feel okay. Little, little wobbly in there, but uh, not too bad at all. Great smooth travel. And then we get a master output knob here. All right, yeah. Knobs feel good. Uh, kind of rubberized little coating on them. We get a little bit of indicators here. So these say they're signal clip uh, indicators for inputs one and two. Get a power indicator. Let's take a look at the front. And on the front, we get one combo mic preamp uh, input here. So it looks like it'll accept XLR or TRS. And this says it is line, uh, input one is line or mic. And on input two here, it looks like we just get a quarter inch. And it looks like it is switchable between line and instrument. So we could plug an external line level device in here or an electric guitar, bass, whatever, right in here, just at the flip of a switch. We get our phantom power control just right on the front, which is nice. So just a simple offer on for 48 volt. Uh, that would only apply to this guy here, won't affect the other input. And we get an output switch between direct monitoring and USB playback. So just a switch, no blend knob, just a one or the other. All right, let's take a look at the back. Not a whole lot to see on the back here. Uh, we have a couple of RCA uh, unbalanced outputs to go to your speakers, the main outs which I suppose are going to be controlled by output here. Uh, we have the USB type B. Where do we plug in our headphones? <laughs> it's so small. I just, I looked, I overlooked right over it. I'm used to seeing a quarter inch input for headphones, but this is an eighth inch uh, input or I'm sorry, output for headphones. So if you're watching this, I am assuming that if, if you're interested in something like the M-Track uh, Solo here, that you're probably shopping for your very first audio interface, either that or you're looking for another inexpensive interface uh, to use as a, I don't know, a portable thing, toss in a bag and go, take it to the, the hotel or on the bus or something with you. So let's go through all of the steps that we're gonna need to take uh, to get this installed, configured, and making music with it, uh, in Windows at least, on day one, just right out of the box, all right? Let's get started. All right, where I usually start is plugging it in and powering it up. I know that uh, for some devices, sometimes they want you to download and install the drivers before you, in you plug it in, but I personally have never had any issues with just plugging it in first. And our cable that it comes with is, uh, it's kind of a short little guy, a little uh, three footer looks like. Yeah, about three feet long. Okay, probably no big surprise, a type B. We're gonna plug it right into the back. 
Down to type A, I am going to plug in to an open port on my computer. All right, I saw a little bit of, little bit of life. I saw at least a little blink. Um, but other than that, uh, there's no real indication that we have power. Okay, so the next step is let's, in, let's download some drivers and get those installed and see what all this thing has to offer on the software side. And in the instructions, they uh, tell us in no uncertain terms, stop for the latest drivers visit here. So let's go here. All right, looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to find what we're looking for. It is a USB audio interface. It is the M-Track Solo. And in my case, I am looking for Windows 10. There we go, Windows 10, and I'm on 64-bit, as are most of us. Show results, and here we go. We do have a driver update. Uh, no firmware updates and no software updates for blah, blah, blah. All right, let's go ahead and download the drivers. All right, downloaded quickly. Let's install them. All right, welcome, blah, blah, blah. Let's do next. I accept the terms and let's install. All right, it says we must restart the system for blah, blah, blah. Let's, I'm just gonna say no. Uh, I, I find that most of the time you don't need to. If you have troubles, then sure, reboot and see what happens. I'm gonna say no. All right, points to M-Audio for helping us out with that, making it easy on us. So you will need a, a, a DAW, some software that's capable of multi-track recording. Let's see what they offer with this thing. So here on the box, it says included software. It comes with uh, Pro Tools first. Uh, we get MPC Beats. We get some virtual instruments. So what is that, Expand 2. And we get a little bit of, what is this, 11 Light and some Avid Effect plugins. In these interface reviews, I don't tend to go and grab any of that software. Number one, uh, as I move this on to its next owner, I don't want to hog the software licenses, so I'll leave that for the next person. And as far as a DAW, you're free to use whatever you want. They suggest Pro Tools first. I am going to use Reaper because it's what I am familiar with. And so I am going to go ahead and bring up Reaper here where I have a new project. And what I want to do is go to Options, Preferences, and then Audio and Device. Now, if you are recording audio, uh, you want the high-performance ASIO drivers that we just downloaded and installed. You don't want to mess with Direct Sound, Wave Out, WSAPI, none of that stuff. You want that ASIO. So go ahead and select that as the audio system. And as far as the driver, since I have several audio interfaces installed here, I'm going to hunt through here and hopefully I find, here we go, M Audio, M Track Solo, and Duo, ASIO. There we go. In most DAWs, you're going to need to tell it what inputs and outputs to enable. And in Reaper, we do it by, oh boy, there are no inputs or outputs here. Okay. Well, uh, since I'm running to that hiccup, I guess I am going to reboot and see if after a reboot, my machine actually recognizes uh, the inputs and output from this thing. I'll be right back. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, hey, what do you know? And now we can enable our first and last input and our first and last output. So one through two in both cases. I am gonna leave the request sample rate and request block size alone, and I'm gonna see what we are able to set in the control panel that comes with this interface. So I'm going to click on the ASIO configuration box here, and that brings up this little fella here. So not a whole lot going on here. It gives us a slider to adjust our buffer size and a drop-down box to adjust our sample rate. The whole trick to know with your buffer size, this directly impacts the amount of latency that you experience. The lower you set your buffer size, the lower, the faster the latency is, so that's good. But also the more kind of punishing it's going to be on your computer. And the less likely you're gonna get a clean, pop and crackle free audio signal in and out. And if you take the slider and you slide it all the way the other way, 
so 2048 samples, that is going to introduce a lot of latency. And so the, the amount of time, like you're playing guitar, the amount of time between you strumming a note and you hearing that note played back, it's gonna be you know, quite long. And that's gonna be very difficult if you're trying to make music, if you're trying to play along with something in time. So what we wanna do is find the lowest buffer setting that still yields clean audio. I tend to start at 128 samples. I found that to be a pretty good all around kind of a setting. It's not the best performance, not the best latency, but there's a pretty darn good chance your computer is not going to throw a fit and make all sorts of weird noises when you're trying to record and play back. So we'll start at 128 and we'll see how that goes. And now here you can select your sample rate. Oh, it looks like we only have 44.1 or 48K. Uh, you can choose either one. I am gonna go with 48K and that's it. We, that's the only options we got to set here. But that's pretty much all we need to set. So it took just a couple of minutes to locate, download, and install drivers and just a couple of minutes to set it up in a DAW to make music with it. All right, now with the geeky nerdy stuff out of the way, what do you say? We plug a couple things into this, send some signal through it, and see if we can't uh, just make a simple little music project. Now, I guess since we're making some noise, uh, you are gonna have to hear what's going on, and I'm gonna have to hear what's going on, so for me to hear what's going on, I am gonna plug a pair of headphones no big surprise here. I'm just gonna, so yeah, eighth inch uh, headphones right into the front. No big mystery. And for you to hear what's going on, I am going to feed the main outputs here out to an external recorder and sync that up with the video here. It looks like just like the Behringer UMC22, there are not individual volume controls for our speakers versus our headphones. Like you're recording uh, electric guitar, electric bass, direct into your interface and using an amp sim, it's no problem. But if you're using a microphone, you need to be able to hear the music, but without the microphone being able to hear the music, right? So you need sound just over headphones and not over your speakers. And since we don't have individual volume controls for headphones and speakers, uh, I, I guess the answer is to just unplug your speakers while you're recording with a microphone. So back in our DAW, we have some drum, virtual drum software here. I am going to control them through a MIDI controller that's plugged into my computer with, uh, via USB. Now there is no uh, MIDI connection or anything on this. On the back, there's no place to plug in a five pin MIDI or anything. So our really only option with MIDI with the M-Track Solo is to use a device plugged into the computer via USB. Tap a couple of keys. All right. We see here on the screen that we're receiving MIDI signal, but we don't, I don't hear anything yet. Yeah, we got our output volume all the way down and that's controlling both what I'm hearing through headphones and what you're hearing through the speaker outputs. So I'm going to keep tapping and see if as I turn this up, we get a little bit of signal. Okay, I can hear it. It's not particularly loud. Like my volume's uh, at eight. So I'm just gonna crank it all the way up to 10. Okay, enough jabbering. Let's just record a quick, simple drum beat. All right, uh, good enough for now. In the interest of moving forward, let's try something else. Let's try a bass guitar into it. Okay, nothing fancy here. I'm just gonna take a standard instrument cable. I'm gonna plug one end into my bass and let's plug the other end into the instrument here or into channel two. And let's flip the little switch over from line because this is not a line level, this is an instrument. So let's switch it over to instrument level. You might be tempted to try to plug it in over here, but our only options are line or mic level, and there's no instrument level for channel one here. So your bass or guitar or whatever is gonna come through very quiet if it's expecting a line level signal, which is 
uh, a higher signal strength than an instrument level signal, which has a lower signal strength. So let's stick with channel two here. All right, my volume's up, I'm plugged in. I am just gonna start plucking notes uh, and turning up the gain here until I start seeing some sort of indicator here on the signal. I, I take it I'm gonna get a green LED probably. Oh, so even all the way down, I already get a green LED. We can flip this switch here. Let's just give this a quick flip over to the direct setting. Hey, all right, I hear it. It looks like you might be hearing it. So I'm just gonna pluck some hard notes and turn it up as loud as I can without getting a clip indicator or hearing distortion. It's right about there, landed about that four and a half, five. I'll back it off just a little bit. So as an alternative, what we can do is switch this back over to the USB and now yeah, so now we don't hear the bass uh, monitored at all. Let's create a track. And as an input, so we're plugged into input number two. So we're gonna wanna select input mono number two. And if we click the record arm and our record monitoring is on. So, and honestly, I can hear it way better. It's much louder, at least in my headphones. All right, let's record just some simple little silly bass line here and we'll move on to the next thing. All right, next, let's record a little bit of acoustic guitar through a microphone. So I am just going to plug one end of an XLR. This is just a standard XLR cable. I'm gonna plug one end into our microphone preamp input. And I'm gonna plug the other end into, in this case, a this is a Shure SM81. This is just a pencil style, small diaphragm condenser microphone. Since this is a condenser microphone, let's give it phantom power and our indicator light comes on. Okay, with gain at nothing, at least I get a little bit of signal. I'm gonna go back to direct monitoring. Okay, getting a little something. All right, a little more. Okay, I can finally hear it. Whoa, what's going on there? So like, that's really loud. That's kind of weird. There's like a little area. That's really quiet. You can kind of hear the background, the heater's on, and you can hear that just all of a sudden. Uh, so record a little bit of guitar here, and then we'll move on to the next thing. All right, yeah, good enough. Uh, okay, what I'm gonna do is record another acoustic guitar track. I'm gonna pan them apart in the stereo field. Okay, what next? I tell you what, let's try some electric guitar direct into it. Uh, electric guitar, I'm gonna plug just directly in with an instrument cable. Again, we are on the instrument setting. There we go. Okay, so same drill as the bass. I'm just gonna pluck a few notes and see. All right, again, all the way down, we're getting some signal. And let's go over to the direct monitor so we can hear. How much does it take to clip it? Yeah, that's 
clipping. Sorry about the buzz, these are single coils and I'm kind of right in the nexus of electromagnetic stuff here in the room. All right, so, you know, guitar direct in doesn't really sound particularly spectacular, so let's uh, add an amp modeling sim. And on our track, again, we need input number two, because that's the instrument input. Let's arm it for recording. Make sure monitoring's on. Let's just record a quick little snippet here. Okay, took a few tries and still didn't get it right, but uh, I'm gonna do another one, slightly different tone, uh, and again, pan them apart. All right, all right, that was fun. Started to take a little bit of shape here. Okay, let's try another virtual instrument. I'm gonna try just a little bit of kind of like Rhodes uh, or something, piano or something. I'm no pianist, but let's see if I can at least make a little something happen just to decorate this a little bit. Okay, yeah, certainly no maestro, but I think that'll do, uh, kind of get the point across. All right, one more thing I would like to do is let's send a, uh, like an electronic instrument, a line input into this. We haven't done that yet. We've been all mic and instrument. Let's try it, see what happens. All right, so what I've got here is just a little simple drum machine, just got a few little pads on it. So it puts out a line level signal through this eighth inch jack here. So I got a cable. That adapts to a couple of quarter inches. I'll just use one of these. And let's put it, let's go ahead and put it in that same thing we had the guitar and the bass in. And except this time, instead of doing instrument, we're gonna flip it over to line. And since it is line, both of these can accept line, so I could choose either input one or two. Okay, so it looks like, yeah, we are getting some signal here. Let's crank it up. Yeah, and that's clipping it. So let's dial it back. Uh, I think I'm gonna doctor it up a little bit here with a couple of effects. All right, I think just about all there is left to do is uh, let's just layer some vocals on top of it and then uh, maybe add a little bit of hand percussion. We'll call this thing done, all right? Let's get her done. Okay, for a kind of lead vocal mic for this one, I'm just gonna use a trusty old Shure SM57 and I've got it just plugged direct in just like the other microphone. So I'm just gonna talk into it kind of close here. Test, test, one, two, uh, it's, I barely saw some signal. Test, one, two, test, one, two, test, one, two. Okay, there we go. Let's see if we can clip it. Test, one, two, test, one, two, test, one, two. Test, test. Okay, all the way up, definitely clips. Test. But boy, all the way up at nine, it doesn't. Let's hear it on direct monitor. Okay, so you're hearing me through the SM57 now. Okay, and uh, let's hear what it sounds like if we drive it into clipping test. Okay, that definitely clips, okay. Yeah, those gain knobs, something weird happens right there about uh, around Eight and a half to nine and a half. All right, let's just do some uh, vocals to this. I guess I'm gonna have to come up with some lyrics and uh, let's see how this sounds. Spoon fed the news of air pollution blues. The traffic's got me thinking of moving out to the country. Spoon fed the news of air pollution blues. The traffic's got me thinking of moving out to the country. All right, now I have a uh, ribbon mic uh, plugged into it. Ribbon mics are notoriously low output. So let's see what we get on the gain knob here. And so this is just set right where it was with the SM57. And here I am talking directly into it. Yeah, I'm getting, you know, pretty consistent, solid uh, uh, signal indicator there. Okay, now you're hearing me through the ribbon mic. And yeah, that's, uh, you know, again, headphone volume cranked. And not all that loud. Let me start 
dialing the touchy knob here. Yep, it's definitely getting much louder. Oh man, it just jumped. Wow. Okay, for backing vocals, each one of these by itself is not gonna sound great, but uh, let's wait till we get them all stacked up and then compress them, see how it sounds. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. I got the ribbon mic out. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of tambourine. All right, I like that so much, I'm gonna do another tambourine track on the other side. Traffic's got me thinking of moving out to the country oh, I can't get anything Okay, so I guess it's time for a final thoughts on this guy. I will give it kind of the benefit of the doubt because this comes in at the very low end of the price spectrum. I got this for $50, and at $50 that puts it right in line with the Behringer UMC-22. And having used both of them, uh, they both have, you know, ups and downs. I think what this has over the UMC-22 is the fact that it has its own drivers and M-Audio is actually in control of those drivers. So if something changes in Windows, then M-Audio has control over that and they can release new drivers. Behringer does not. Behringer relies on ASIO for All, which are third party. They have no control over those. If something breaks, M-Audio can fix it. Now, if they actually will, I guess that's a different story, but what the UMC-22, I think, has over the M-Track Solo is number one, it has quarter inch outputs on the back. These RCA outputs, uh, these kind of drive me nuts. I don't understand. You know, audio interfaces, even entry level plastic audio interfaces are still in the realm of pro audio. And in pro audio, we use quarter inch <laughs> connectors. We don't use RCA connectors. Some of your gear might have RCA connectors, and if your speakers or monitors whatever do, then hey, that'll be fine. Uh, also, the headphone jack, uh, the UMC-22 has a quarter inch headphone jack. The eighth inch thing I think is, is unnecessary. Uh, and also, I thought that the gain controls here, like the, the just overall output volume was low on the headphones and the speakers. The gain um, there's just not a whole lot of dynamic range here. At the lowest setting, a guitar and a bass 
were still registering signal. They weren't clipping or anything, so that's fine. But I have a feeling if you've got really hot pickups, there's probably not a whole lot of headroom here. And also the gain. Um, there was ample gain. I can't say that there wasn't enough. I was able to use a dynamic mic and a ribbon mic and, you know, two different direct instruments. You know, that's fine. Um, but the whole weirdness with the gain knob just getting really touchy there between 9 and 10. And, you know, since this doesn't just have a ton of gain on tap, if you're using dynamic mics, you're probably going to spend a lot of your time with the gain knob turned way up. And if it's so weird and touchy here with the knob all the way up, that's, that's a problem, I think. But the drivers seem fine. Drivers seem stable. I haven't had any problem with them or anything. Uh, the included software looks like, you know, the Pro Tools first. I mean, that's free. You can just go grab it even without this interface. Uh, but it did look like they give you a, a virtual instrument and some um, effects to play with. So that's cool. Uh, as far as line inputs, those seem to behave just fine. Um, maybe if you have troubles uh, with the preamp, either not having enough headroom or not having enough gain, um, maybe an external preamp. But really, I can't recommend, you know, taking a $50 interface and then spending hundreds of dollars on, <laughs> on an external preamp to plug into it. So between this and the UMC-22, uh, other than the UMC-22 just being aggravatingly absent of its own drivers, and I had problems with them in Windows, at first they were fine, something changed in Windows, and then they were not fine. At a software level, I have to give it to M-Audio here. At a hardware level, I think the UMC-22 is just a better all-around device. All right, well, I think this has gone along, gone on long enough here. I think that'll do it for me this time. If you have your own experiences with this box, let us know down in the comments below how have your experiences been with it, and, you know, what are, what's your use case? What all are you using this little box for? All right, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. I think that'll do it for me this time, and I'll see you guys again next time.